Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and today I'm going to be testing Nier Automata on the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti for FPS monitoring. This time I won't be using cams since it's not currently working with this game. And if you enjoy the content and want to support the channel directly, there's a link to the Patreon and affiliate links down in the description. So Nier Automata. I'll be doing 1080p, 900p and 720p using the FAR mod. To skip one of those sections of the video, check the description below. So my objective here on all resolutions is to try and get 60 frames per second as constant as possible since this game has a ton of performance issues. It's overall a bad PC port, a rushed PC port. In the options menu, apart from resolution, you have blur, shadows, effects and ambient occlusion. Blur is motion blur, which I think is per object motion blur, looks quite good in this game. Then shadows, the resolution of the shadows, this is a big performance hit. Effects, we have low and high. It doesn't really look that much different from low to high, so I recommend trying low if you're having performance issues. And then we have ambient occlusion on or off. This setting, ambient occlusion, is quite interesting. It's not only ambient occlusion, it also includes a very decent anti-aliasing solution that uses way less resources than MSAA in the options menu of this game because you have MSAA if you want, but it's an enormous performance hit. So if you want less Diagis, I recommend enabling Amin Occlusion. Apart from Amin Occlusion, you get some anti-aliasing that looks quite good, and it's not as big as a performance hit as you see in MSAA. But on 1080p, I had to use pretty much the lowest settings, which doesn't look that much different to the highest. And in the FAR mod, after pasting the files in the games folder, when you launch the game, just press Ctrl Shift Backspace, and you get the mods menu. In order to get better performance there using, using that options menu from the mod, just lower the lighting option from ultra to low or ultra to off. Personally, ultra and high look pretty much the same in the lighting option. For the best quality performance, you get a huge performance hit by turning this off. So just look at the video and see if you like it or just try it out by yourself. The lighting option is global illumination, which simulates indirect light bouncing which means that in real life, light bounces from objects. This game is trying to mimic that. When you lower this option, you have less light bounces. The light bounces less, which breaks the static of the game a little bit. So just try it out yourself. It changes in real time. Personally, I think that low looks good enough. And if you need better performance, just turn it off. It's not that bad. On 1080p, I first show you the lower setting with lighting on off, and that's enough for 60 frames per second with some drops every now and then. 100% playable, if you ask me. Then I show you 1080p once again, but this time lighting, instead of being off, is on low. So we have some better looking lighting. And the game has some drops below 60 more than when the dynamic lighting is turned off but it's still playable so if you prefer that extra detail you might want to check that out then on 900p i crank up the settings i use blur shadows on medium effects on high and i turn on amino occlusion so we have some extra anti-aliasing and on the far mod i use low lighting and that was enough to get 60 frames per second pretty much all the time with some drops every now and then in my opinion, this is the best setting of quality performance, 900p with good anti-aliasing and better shadows and lighting. And then 720p, I just cranked up everything to the max, but I kept lighting on medium in order to maintain a constant 60 frames per second. So yeah, those are the options that I found in order to get 60 frames per second. If you want to see the game without all these tweaks enabled, just check the link down in the description where I tested the game once it was released. And one very important thing to keep in mind, this game has trouble with performance even on higher end systems. It has stuttering every now and then, let me explain you why. This game is open world and when you're traveling between areas, you'll notice in the overlay, you'll see that when I'm just traveling between areas, the hard drive usage will just spike to 100% or 90%. That's because the game is loading new assets from the place you're going to and they're loading it very quickly. So the hard drive usage just spikes and makes the game stutter because we are not loading stuff fast enough. So if you want to avoid those stutters as much as possible, just make sure to have a faster hard drive. I just have a 7200 RPM hard drive. So if you have an SSD or something like that, the game should be smoother when just going to different parts of the map. In my opinion, it's not a deal breaker. Even on consoles, this happens. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. I highly, highly recommend this game. 
I know it's a terrible PC port, but the game that was made here is one of the best I played this year so far. I suggest just waiting for a sale. If you play less than two hours, you can ask Steam for a refund if you don't like the game. It's a bad PC port, but it's a great game. Just get it very cheap. If you don't like it, if you don't like how it runs, just refund it on Steam and you'll be fine. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope you keep enjoying the video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.